Hey guys, Nigel here with you. Nigel's Modelling Bench. Now I'm not going to say it. Um, this is Harry's fault. Oh, Harry Houdini, another YouTuber on here. Um, Harry, if you remember, I did a, a video part three or part four of my sort of Lancia mods thing I'm doing. And I mentioned in there about Harry Houdini had built a Fiat 500 from Italy in 112 scale and ended up giving it back to the guy because he just wanted to throw it against the wall because it was just garbage um, with all the stupid weak plastic pivot points and everything. So um, it kind of got me thinking. I thought, I wonder if I can do it. I wonder if I can modify that kit to make it better, you know, um, because I'm lucky enough I've got a lathe and a milling machine and all that. And I can make these parts and make it make it better. And then it's, and sometimes it's just a case of replacing plastic pivots with brass rod and stuff. And then I saw a comment come through from Simon, Simon Cousins. He's the great guy who sends me all my lovely bits and pieces. I've had another parcel from him today with some um, paper towel. So it's this uh, lint-free paper towel. And of course he sent me all these wooden cotton buds as well. They're going to last me the rest of my life. There's some there behind me. Um, they're everywhere. Um, so thank you very much for Simon. And um, and also want to say a big shout out. Get well soon, mate. Um, I think it was Friday. He was rushed into hospital. Um, his heart stopped. Yeah, due to a lung infection. And he's emailing me sort of every day and just let me know how he's getting on. And um, never met the guy in my life. Never met the guy in life, but you sort of almost become a friend, a, a virtual friend, if you like, online. Um, but yeah, so he's uh, he's actually got the Fiat 500 kit. And um, I, I sort of said, like, you know, if you want to do a, a buddy build or whatever, or, you know, something like that. He said, yeah, I'm up for that. You know, so what I thought was, as a return of a favour for him sending me all these bits and pieces, I'll get this kit, I'll build it, I'll do it as a premiere build like I'm doing with the tank, like we did with the Stuka, and I'll do it a regular day every week, maybe a Friday, 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock or something like that, and then uh, Fiat Friday, and then basically um, anything I make for this kit to modify it to make it stronger, I can make and make two of them and send them someone to Simon. So he'll be he'll be uh, he'll be making a kit with the strong suspension as well. Because according to Harry, apparently you 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 put the thing down and you pick it up and the suspension just breaks because the wheels are heavy and this that and the other. And I can well believe it. I've I've looked at a couple of builds online and it's got these dafty little you know where you have the little C clip just goes clip clips over. And I mean Tamiya do that and it's it's normally impossible to get it apart but it just seems that everyone else does it it's always a bit you know just falls apart and there's nothing holding it on the end and it falls off the end and oh just you know terrible so I thought I'd give it a go so that's why I got this kit and here it is I've gone for this version this is the 695 SS Assetto Corsa which is race trim or race setup uh, depending on which translation you look at I think it's actually race trim to be honest um but basically, yeah, it's the Abarth 695 SS, SS <laughs> um, and it's uh, it's a lovely, lovely kit. I saw a couple of builds. There's a build by a French guy on YouTube, and there's a Japanese build as well. Both beautiful builds. But what really appealed to me is they've they've taken the standard Fiat 500 with this kit, and they've modified it so you've got to cut the wheel arches out just like you would on a real thing. If you want to fit the flared arches, you've got to cut the original wheel arches out, fit the flared arches on. Um, obviously because it's so early it won't have a roll cage or anything but um, you know you can decide whether you're going to put carpets in it or not and the carpets are actually depicted as photo etch and it's, it looks like a very very nice kit actually um, far better than that Lancia uh, and this one actually cost me about £92 on Amazon so uh, it actually came from Italy as well so that was pretty cool so um, I think it was Italy may have been Spain May have come from Italy, but uh, yeah, 92 quid. Um, it took about a week to get here, you know, free delivery and everything because I've got Prime, and um, and it got here in absolutely perfect condition. So, so can't go wrong there. Uh, and then also, you also have the option to build. You can build the Assetto Corsa version, which is the race trim, and then you've got the ordinary SS there, um, which is basically doesn't have the wide wheels, but you've got. In this kit, you've got the wide wheels, you've got the wide wheel arches, but you also get no wheel arches and the skinnier wheels. You've got the race seats, you get the road car seats, um, 
you have the bonnet up on its stage you can see here that I say the bonnet it's actually the boot the engine cover is actually left up to aid cooling and it also improves downforce I'm guessing um, and then you have the option to not have any bumpers and you have the rubber straps on there's lots and lots of extras over the standard 500 kit so you know if you have a 500 lying around and you don't want to build a bog stock 500 get yourself one of these you can build the a set of Corsa and then you'll have all the parts left over to build your 500 into an SS. -er. So uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I say SS -er because on here in English it's written a Barth, I always said a Barth but I don't get pulled up for it, it's actually a Barth. Um, a, a Barth. But I say a Barth. That's just the way I've always said it and it's a habit and I'll never get out of it. Most Western people do. Um, but yes, yeah, so you've got the, uh, it says SS in English, but when you actually see the, uh, the it written, like on the dashboard and stuff, they'll have chrome um, letters in the dashboard and it says ESSA, ESSA, E-S-S-E, E-S-S-E. So it's S -S -E, not S -S -E. So there you go. So without further ado, let's get this fairly sizable box on the bench. I haven't even opened it yet. It's still got the, it's still got the tape on it attaching to hold the box together. So I'll get this box on the bench and we'll have a good look through it and then um, have a look through the instructions, have a look at the decals, have a look at the parts and then at the end I'll do some photos with some close-up and, uh, and we'll go from there. So um, let's get to the bench with the overhead cab. Okay so as we can see we've got a pretty big box and it's very glossy and it's a bloody nightmare for the lighting. You can see I've got a little bit of lighting just going up there. So um, forgive me if it's not good, but it's the best I can do. So um, basically it's a Fiat Abarth, Fiat Abarth 695 SSA Assetto Corsa from Italy. Carson here is the, I think it's German, um, big um, like importer for um, Italy and Tamiya and everything. Uh, so you, you've got the dual version here, you can do it in, in two models as I said. They're saying here new moulds, which they always say. Kit number is 4705. Um, as I say, I, I said in about two videos ago, I said I will never ever buy another Italy 112 scale kit. And here we are with another Italy 112 scale kit. Thanks Harry. Well done mate. So anyway, um, so we've got all our lovely Italian writing on here. So it's a highly detailed model, openable hood and trunk. Open or closed. See, see, is that the hood or is that the trunk? Is that the hood or is that the trunk? Hey, open or closed top, so you can have the top rolled back. Uh, opening car doors, steerable wheels, working system. <laughs> we'll see what that's like. Working suspension. Oh God. Rubber tires, a photo etch, and chrome parts. So we got a lot of photo etch parts in here. So looking around the box, we can see here on the end, Italeri.com, made in Italy. Um, and we've got here, with, they've got the uh, license for Abarth to do this. So it's 25 centimetres long, which is a nice small model. And then we've got some um, information here about the car, about you know how it turned from the 500 into, um, into the 695 and everything. And I bring it up closer so you can pause and have a read of that if you want to. There you go. Okay, and we've got it in all the other languages as well. So I'll do all the other languages in case we've got other people from other countries or other people who speak other languages watching. So you've got photo etch parts there, you can see it's a lot of photo etch in there. And then we've got a beautiful decal sheet, which has got some nice options on there, we've got different number plates and everything on there, look, which is really nice. And then on the end of the box, we've basically just got, it's too tall to stand in front of the camera because it's so close. There we go. So at the end of the box, you can see we've just got images there. And then here we have a beautiful hologram logo there with the Abarth badge on it. Uh, we've got some health and safety here, 14 plus, telling you some colours that you should use using Tamiya, Tamiya, it's an area acrylic paints. Never used them, never even seen them, don't know what they're like. And then here we've got pictures of the built-up model, which I always like to see. This is something Italeri do quite a lot, I think. Ravel do it a lot. Rather than CAD images, you know, this is how the model would look if we'd made it right. This is how the model does look when it's been built. It's really good. Um, very nice to see. And you can see down in here, just have a look at this. Point of interest, you can see there's the interior and we've got a white floor pan in there. Bear that in mind. And you can, we've got a great big decal for the roof, which is nice. You've got that checkered um, sort of look, um, uh, 
a canvas roof that rolls back and then you've got a lovely picture here of the Fiat 500 that this derives from and that's the other kit 4703 and that's the one that Harry had. To all intents and purposes they're the same kit. So as you can see the tape is still on here, I haven't opened it, we'll probably open it now and find it's all mashed up inside but from what I've seen online this kit looks to be a lot better value and a nicer model than that Delta Integrale, in my opinion. I may be proven wrong, but we shall see. Um, and as I was saying, Simon's got one of these and we're going to build this together. Um, well, I guess what I'll do is I'll build it and then he'll follow along, whatever. But um, I'm not going to start this until Simon's better and out of hospital. So get well soon, mate, and uh, I hope everything turns out good. So, God, this is a tight fitting box lid and I can't get my fingers under there. There we go. Right, so we get the lid over there out of the way and we can see in here we have lots and lots of stuff. And I'm going to get my lighting sorted and then come back. Here we go, that's better. Now you can see what it is we're looking at. So, we can see here we've got a lovely decal sheet, really beautiful decal sheet. We'll look at this first. Um, you can see, as we said earlier, you've got all those different, you've got Japanese, um, ba -ba -bum -bum, Italian, Turin. Do, 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 do. That's Turin, Torino. That's Roma. I'm not sure that one or that one is. Maybe that's um, Bologna. Genoa, perhaps, yeah. And then, not sure that one is. That one looks like German to me. And then those two are obviously Japanese. Um, and then we've got the front plates there to go with the to the rear plates there. So that's going to be for your road going version. And I'm guessing the race car will have one on the back. That'll be the Torino one anyway. That's the one I would use. And then we've got the, the decals here, which are going down the sides, over the trunk, or over the engine cover. And then you've got the, um, the door trim there for the, this is for the Assetto Corsa version. And then you've got these down here there for the, um, for the road going version and then we got our sun strip we got our badge across the front the bigger barth and we can see here the 695 essa essa as i was saying rather than ss it's got essa essa okay so um and then we've got instrument dials there we've got some placards here which is really nice touch looks like we've got a tax disc or something and then we've got some stencil data there so we've got stencils probably for the air filter oil filter and stuff like that and there's the checker checker roof which is interesting they've done the the white rather than the black so it might have been easier if they'd done this black and you could have painted the roof white and put the black on because maybe maybe the white will show the black will show through the white the other thing i've noticed a lot of people build it like this and there are two vents in the top of the engine cover um and i think it's an area of design this so that you put that on and then you paint the grills red um, and I think everyone just leaves them white, so I think I'll paint them red. I think they should be red. So that's the decal sheet. So we've looked at that now. So that's very, very nice indeed. So we'll put that over there out of the way. And I'm just looking on here. Yeah, you see, you can see that on here, they've put that decal across the engine curve. You've got two grills across the top. They've painted it in, in red, rather than just leaving it white. So that's what I've seen other people do, which is, I thought, incorrect. Got some mesh here, which is a typical. Italy thing, you get this mesh. This is something Tamiya do a lot as well. So um, that's that there. And then we've got attached to this piece of card, which is a nice touch, it makes the box nice and rigid. We have our photo etch and everything in there. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. We've got a correction sheet here, which is a nice touch. We've got a little instruction manual, which is really nice. Nice little um, booklet type manual. So we'll have a look at that in a second. We've got our body here, which is in its own little, well it's not in a box, it's in its own little separator. We've got tyres in there. So the packaging is much nicer than the Delta for a start. And the body is lovely. Very, very cute. Nice size. You can see how big that is. Got my hand there, you can see it's a nice size. As you know, 25 centimetres long, so that's a nice touch. Tyres in there, got loads of them. Clear parts. Um, looks like mine have got a bit damaged, maybe. We shall see. And then we've got chrome parts there, lovely. And then we've got sprues coming out of our ears here, black and silver, black and silver. We've got some body parts there, which are nice, bulkheads and everything. 
That's something else Harry mentioned, massive ejector pin marks in these and we'll have to get them sorted but it's not an issue. And then we've got grey plastic here for our main floor pan and our interior and our seats and everything there. And then we have here our little baggy a vinyl hose, some larger hose, springs, a bit of copper wire in there and some clear hose as well. So all nice, all good. So we'll get the body and the tyres out and then we can put the box to one side. I won't put the box on the floor because Jess will sniff at it and everything and get on my nerves. So there we go. So we've got a grey clear canvas now to start looking at the model. So I think the first thing we'll do is have a look at the instructions. Alright, so as I mentioned earlier, we've got this correction sheet here. And um, basically what this is saying is, this is step 43 in the instructions, where you've built up the body and everything and fit the hood. So they're telling you in the instructions here is step 43 to fit the bonnet, hood, whatever you want to call it, when everything else is already built up. What they're saying is 35, I'm guessing that's B, um, so at step 35, which is here, so you've got the body shell and you're fitting your interior bits and pieces to it, fit the, the bonnet then. Um, don't quite know why, but that's what they're telling you to do, so uh, there we go. So that's what that correction's for, so don't forget that one while you're building it. There's obviously a good reason for it, they wouldn't have done it. Okay, so we've got the manual in front of us here, it's a lovely little glass size, it's about, I'd say it's about A5 size, it looks like it's sort of A4 when it's folded out. It is nice and glossy on the front, you can see there we've got the lovely glossy images of the model there built up, or, or images there have. Um, so we've got some history here, so we've got a, the range of feet of bath represented on the poster of the house. Feet of bath represented in the poster of the house, so there you can see we've got, I'll give that a close up so you can have a good look at it. I don't think you'll be able to read the right on the bottom, but that's basically a poster of the different versions of the Essa Essa. Um, and then here we've got there showing you the two versions you can make from the box. I will definitely be doing this one, the race car. So uh, there we go. Um, so we've got, again, we've got the same as written on the box. We've got some history here in English, 14 plus, and then we've got some health and safety stuff in, in there. And then we've got some tips and helpful tips and everything on building. It's going to stay like read the instruction manual before you start and do this and do that and don't feed it to your dog and this, that and the other. We've got all our sprue call outs, all nicely numbered. Uh, numbers that you can see rather than needing a, a, a magnifying glass for and um, very very nice indeed so all the sprue collects there for the clear parts we've got the tires you can see we've got four tires for the Assetto Corsa and then we've got five tires for the road going version all our different size tubes here and everything different springs and everything we need, we need for the kit and uh, yeah going forward lots and lots of bits we've got the photo etch here this is a little clear acetate sheet for your instrument dials, which is a really nice touch for a model in this sort of price range. Nylon net, um, AC black, I'm not quite sure what that's for, but uh, we shall see. Um, more sprues here, you can see we've got the Assetto Corsa wheels. We've got, sorry, the these are the road go wheels here, and then here we've got the Assetto Corsa wheels. And then we've got our race seats here. And then if you remember back on that grey sprue, you've got your standard road going seats there. So you've got, you know, a, a good old choice. So going into the instructions here, we're starting off with the, um, this is the front bulkhead. Um, if you can call it a bulkhead, it's more like a flat tray really where the fuel tank sits. But you're basically telling you to remove the, um, the parts that would make it right hand drive. So it's going to be a left hand drive model. So if you want to build it as a right hand drive, I see no reason why you couldn't because it's easy just stopping the steering box over, but have a look. Um, and then we've got the adding the steering column parts to the to the bulkhead there, or the firewall, whatever you want to call it. Then we've got a steering box going together here, and you can see we've actually got a worm, uh, a worm and pinion here. So, um, interesting to see how good that is. They're telling you to clean up any flashes and do not paint. So that's all going to go together lovely. Um, if that's all floppy and everything, maybe make up some little bushes to go in there to make it nice and stiff. But at the end of the day, I would never try and turn the wheel to turn the steering. But it's nice to have it connected so that when you move the wheels, the steering wheel moves. You do it once or twice and then it sits on a shelf and you never do it again. So does it really matter? Probably best to glue it up solid, really. Here's the bulkhead we're going to fit in the front. So this is the lower part of the bulkhead. I'm going to put the pedals in there. And this is where I said no. On the side of the box... We had that image of the floor pan painted white. 
So they're telling us here to paint the front section A and the floor pan D. Okay, so we go to our paint callouts. This is what I've noticed from people's reviews. A is light grey and D is flat black. Bear that in mind. So coming down here, then we're adding in the steering box, put the steering box into the front. Then we're adding in the transverse leaf spring for the front suspension. And here's where the fun starts. We've got the bump stops going in there, upper pivot points, which again, I've got these little weak plastic pins in. And then we've got the, the pivot here for the steering column going in there. Um, for the steering arm, sorry, not the steering column. Again, that's a little weak plastic pivot. And then you've got all this little plastic parts going together and they're telling you to use the, um, the hot screwdriver to melt the ends, which is like 1950s kits uh, or 1960s kits, should I say. Um, and then get that all sorted. And then to here it's telling us to build up the uprights for the front. Again, we've got these little weak plastic pins. It's all like, like Harry was saying, it's all just going to break so easily. And then you've got these little plastic arms going on here heat the ends to melt them over and then clip them onto those little plastic pins oh it's just all oh it's just designed to fall apart um and then we've got the shock absorbers going in here shock absorbers have springs in them which is a which is a bit strange and the front suspension it looks like the it looks like the actual leaf spring is going to be expected to bend to give you working suspension on the front I'm not quite sure. We'll have a look when we come to the plastic parts. But again, you see you've got a plastic pin going in there, which is just, oh dear, dear, dear. Yeah, it's designed to break. And then here they're telling you even more of these little points to come in with a hot screwdriver and sort it all out. Then we're going to turn the, the floor pan over. And oh look, it's telling us here to paint the boot area N, which is, I think, gloss white. Yes, N is gloss white. So it's telling us here to paint the boot gloss white, the front wings, front inner wings A, which is light grey, and then the area here has also got to be painted gloss white. So you have the choice of the gloss white floor pan from the box, or you have the completely flat black floor pan, like they're telling you here, with the flat black boot and everything. Okay, and then you go with another page and you've got they're telling you to paint this area here white, the front arch is grey the boot area uh, white and the actual floor pan here black. What are you going to do? I don't know. So, a um, bit weird. Uh, so just paint it, do, your ref do some reference checks to see what you want to do. Um, on here you can see they're telling us to paint the the um, rear shelf white and everything. So I'm, I'm guessing the whole interior, but I, don't, I can't see them having carpets in a race car. So. It would be all white inside, it would be body colour. So if you do that lovely sort of light grey, bluey grey they had, I'll, I'll probably that's the colour I would go for, um, you know, and, and do it like that. Um, so here we're going to add the rear bulkhead in. Sorry, here we're adding the centre console in, and then we've got something there going into the rear step. I don't know what that is. And they're telling us to open a hole, but only for the uh, SAS, so that's the road version. Uh, and then we've got a hot air pipe or um, hot air duct going in there that's going to feed hot air into the cabin for you which is apparently on the real thing it's impossible to close off in the summer so you just cook and then we've got the um, the duct here for fresh air going in and then we've got looks like a fuse box or a relay um, it would have, if it had a dynamo that would be your relays in there modern day cars with alternators have the relays in the back of the uh, in the back of the um, alternator so remember this is drum brakes all round, so you've got your drum, your brake back plates going on there. As I say, that piping going in, and then we've got the main air duct going into the engine there. So that's your main air intake. Uh, and that's fed in from the grills across the back of the body here. Um, building up the engine, something I did notice from other people's builds. You don't actually get an engine. The engine is actually inside this tin work. And then you've got a big fan in there, which is blowing engine air in to keep the air engine cool. So you don't actually get an engine and then put the tin work over it. All you get is the tin work. So if you're looking at building a, a stripped down engine or whatever, you're not going to be in luck. All you've got is the tin work. And then you've got photo etch, um, a bark badge is going onto the aluminium sump there. Uh, and you've got part of the engine block there. That's all you're going to get is that side there. So uh, it looks like you might get that side there as well, looking at it. Um, but that would be, I think the actual casing was aluminium. I'm not sure have to have a look at that 
Um, distributor cap going on, just got the three prongs on the distributor cap because it's a two cylinder engine. We've got the oil filler cap going on there. Um, and then there's an air hose of some sort there. And then we've got the main air intake for the um, for the fan going in there. Um, starter motor by the look of it, top cap for the gearbox. We've got gearbox going to get it out, looks like the shafts will turn within the gearbox. And then we've got the exhaust system going on, building up the silencer, building up the tailpipes. I'm guessing they're going to be chrome. I'm guessing they should be chrome. Let's have a look. E is the sprue. E is, yes, E is chrome. So there we go. So that's good. So you've got chrome tailpipes on this one. And then more detail going on the engine. The engine looks beautiful built up. I have actually seen it done and it looks lovely. Um, and you've got some more hoses going on here. Bracket there. Uh, you've got a decal. It looks like you've got a decal or some writing or something going on the air filter there. You've got a decal going on the side of the air filter anyway. Um, so it's all very, very nicely done with all the um, you know the proper placards and everything in the engine bay. And then we've got the rear suspension going together. Here again we've got these plastic pins. So that could be replaced with brass rod quite easily. Um, and that's all going together there. Again doing the same on the other side with a spring going in your shock absorber. You've got the main road spring and then you've got a spring inside the shock absorber. Here you've got the, the actual spring in the rear on the rear wishbone and then you've got the actual um, the shock absorber is inside the spring. So they've got a spring inside that shock absorber. I'd be checking before I glue anything that it's not going to sit with it because these like they're like a VW Beetle as the suspension goes up you get negative camber and as it comes down you get positive camber so if it's sitting too high you'll get positive camber. Go back and check some other builds on YouTube and see how they look. Tim work going underneath there to protect the engine and then we've got the actual gearbox mounter or I'm not sure if that's just a cover there and then you're adding in your wheel hubs and everything into there. Uh, and then we're making a start on the dashboard. As I said you've got a beautiful dashboard it's telling you to drill some holes optional whatever just check out what, what it is you're doing. You've got a decal going on there with the 695 SA badge on there. Um, and then you've got the instrument pod. You've got decals going in the instrument pod. And then you've got clear covers to go over them, which is a really nice touch for a 12-scale for a kit. I mean, you've got to go up to Model Factory Hero to find that sort of thing. So that's really nice. Um, and then that's the air vent there that blows out hot air on your feet all the time, apparently, which in the summer is you just cook because <laughs> you can't even block it off it has no flaps or anything so uh, that's that and then you've got the air pipes there which are feeding into the dashboard for the um for the screen demisting got some more tubes here going into that area that's the front area this is this is now looking inside the boot lid so the windscreen will be sort of here if you could imagine where we're looking adding in that panel there with our steering going to slide over the steering column photo etch um supports for the fuel tank so that's going to be a nice touch. Got a battery with one battery cable on it and the little old grey plastic. That was like a silver grey plastic toolbox. I remember I had a couple of these in my Fiat 128s of years ago. I wish I still had them now. But um, yeah, basically that's what they're for. Um, fuel tank there. And then you're adding the fuel tank. You've also got your jack here. Which is your jack that, for jacking up on the side of the road. I remember I had a couple of these. And then you've actually got a decal to go on there. That's going to be health and safety, whatever sort of thing. And then you've got your battery clamps going in there. Um, and then we've got our clamps going down there, holding our fuel tank down. We've got our bag there. That it was like a metallic blue silvery bag. I bet that's metallic blue. I Let's see what they say. I remember from my Fiat 128 days, they were always a bag with metallic blue. There we go. Azure blue. There we go. So I was right. <laughs> um, and then you've got your brake master cylinder or brake uh, reservoir there. And whatever that is, I'm not sure. That little item there, I have to find out what that is. And then only for a bar 60. Okay, so you've got switch gear here. You've got two levers. One is the choke and one is the starting lever. But that's only for the road going version. You've got the gear stick here, handbrake here. And then we've got some, this is only for this road going version as well. So you've got this plastic center console bit going in there, another plastic center console bit there. But as I say, only for the road going, not for the race car. So you've got all these bits left over to put in your Fiat 500 and turn it into a 695, which is a nice touch. Um, I'll bet, I'll bet Simon goes and buys this kit and then he turns his 500 into a 695, which means I'll have to make him two lots of the suspension parts. Never mind. Um, 
only for our Barber 695 S Essa here again. This is all the floor. We'll see that in a minute. This is all the rubber mats on the floor. They're all made of photo etch. So, you know, unlike a lot of car kits where you're forced to have a flat floor that looks carpeted in a race car, you just know it's wrong. Here you've got the steel pressing floor, which would be accurate for a race car. And then here you've got the rubber mats going in. So you can take your choice. So this one is for the Assetto Corsa. This is for the race car. So you've got your seats here going onto solid subframes and they're going to bolt down to the, down to the floor there. Okay, and you've got this bracket here, which is a photo etcher that's going to hold your jack down. And then even though it was a race car, it still had a rear seat. So I'm guessing there were rules they had to have four seats or something. Um, and then here you've got the SS. So you've got the road car style seats with the seat, the mounts going into the runners in the seats. And then you've got the actual uh, pivots there so you can pivot the seats up and down as you would in the rear car. Steering wheel going on there with a nice uh, bar, uh, probably in a barth deck will go in, in the uh, center there. And you've got your rear center, rear side panels going in here. And then to allow for correct steering cut, the mud guards along the gray area use internal line as a reference to cut. And there, I don't think there's any internal line in there. So we shall see. But you've got to cut some of the plastic away, which is great. I really enjoy that because you know I love modifying things. And then again, for the SS Hatch, of course, you're doing the same on the other side. Adding in our um, B-post pillar there with our door latch and everything in it. I think there's, from looking at another build, I think there's some big ejector pin marks in there. Uh, building up our doors. And what's nice to see on here, we can actually build the doors up. No, we can't. Yes, you can. You can build the doors up as doors, as they would have been steel shells, um, fit them to the body and then put your interior panelling after. So you can actually build the body up, paint it all as one, and then fit all this up, this up afterwards. That's a nice touch, because with these opening doors and that, it's nice to get them to fit properly before you start painting and everything. Um, and then, so once we've done that, we've got the hinges going in. We're going to add our door mirrors, add all our lovely handles inside. So we've got window winder in there, we've got the door opening and then the grab handle. Um, and then you've got the exterior door handle and the alternative, uh, um, or optional, should I say, mirrors. And then we're adding the doors to the body. I would build up the doors as shells, put them in the body, and then paint it all together if I were you. Um, and then we've got the detail going in here. So we've got a rear view mirror. Uh, this is part of the mechanism for the rollback roof. Um, we've got our internal roof lining there. This is for 695SS closed roof version. For open version only for 695SS, there's nothing mentioned about a set of courses so I'm guessing you would do this um, I'm guessing you would do this I'm guessing they would have some visors in a race car and then you're definitely putting that in that's part of the um, part of the uh, scuttle panel there and you're going to cut some mesh from that big sheet of mesh we have we're going to cut some mesh to go over that vent at the back and then uh, you've got a chrome trim here which is only for 695 SS um, optional for a set of Corsa and then you've got your wheel arches going on there so you've got the wheels coming together now. We've got the great big, I say great big, the wide wheels going in for the Assetto Corsa and then the normal skinnies for the ordinary car. And then you're adding them on there. And then we've got another piece of sheet metal there going into the uh, engine area, into the engine bay. And then we're fitting the body onto the um, onto the uh, floor pan. Looks like we've actually got a spring in there for the, for the rear um, engine cover to sit down on. Or you can use a piece of tube. Not quite sure what that's all about. We'll have a look at that um, when it comes to the build. And then you've got a piece of copper wire going in here. Not quite sure what that's for either. Um, so this is a set of Corsa. So you're putting copper. So that's probably part of the hinge because the, the bottom would normally hinge and open outwards. But on this one, obviously, it hinges upwards. So um, and then we've got the uh, you've got photo etch latches for the rubber pull rubber pull down um, hold downs for the front area and for the rear as well so that's nice and then you've got these little pull downs here holding the trunk lid onto the actual so that's all going to work actually if it's photo etched you've got these pivots in here that's all going to work that's going to be very nice and then you've got as I say the upper hinge is going in here so I'm not quite sure what that bit of copper wire is for they're giving you some pretty critical dimensions for it um, hmm, we shall see and then here you're adding in these little supports that hold the trunk lid up and then adding in the, the hold downs for the side. 
and then still run a set of Corsa um, and then we've got the rear bumper going on we've got the does it have a rear bumper? set of Corsa? yes it does rear lights going in uh, it's telling us to drill some holes in the bumper there because we have the number plate fitted to the bumper obviously because the number plate would normally go on the boot lid but the boot lid is actually up so you can't see in it um, and also on here you've got a photo etch panel to add to there to cover up and that's all going to have to be blended in and everything uh, and then going over here we're going to fit the bonnet obviously that's in the wrong place and then we're going to fit the closed roof um, that's weird they're telling us to fit the bonnet there and then they're telling us to fit the bonnet there it's a bit strange and then unless this is the Assetto Corsa and that's the road no that's got the Assetto Corsa seats in it I don't know why they're telling us to fit the bonnet there and they're telling us to fit the bonnet there very strange and then we're going to cut off the bumper mounts here because you have no front bumpers and then we're putting that little towing eye in there headlights lovely headlights with bulbs in so they're going to look great rubber hold down straps for the front so that's your set of course of version done and then this is for the road going version again you've got that piece of copper wire I'm not sure what that's for so uh, that's interesting that so again you've got that piece of copper wire going in and you've got the details going inside the engine cover and as you can see normal number plate going on there number two black AC so that's what that black panel was for so I'm not sure uh, that's going to be for the number plate to be a backing for the number plate. And then you've got your um, number plate light there with a lovely chrome surround going on it. You're adding that in again, hinges on the bottom, whereas on the Assetto Corsa, hinges are on the top. And then you've got the rubber hold downs here for the road car version. Building up your spare wheel, you've got your straps going in there for the, for the spare wheel. And then going in, fitting the windscreen, adding in your uh, bonnet or your hood with the stiffener inside. Adding in the front emblem, putting your spare wheel in, and then you've got your number plate going in the front there. And then you've got your closed roof going in here. Again, they're telling you to fit the bonnet again after they've already just told you to fit it here. I don't get that. Um, and then you've got the folded back roof. So you actually have a sheet of leather to, for the roof. So you can have the roof folded back or have it open. Or I'm guessing you may be able to actually fold it back. Uh, not sure we'll have a look at that in a minute again headlights going in with the lovely little lenses and everything and then here we've got our color call outs done in color which is a nice touch and on matte paper which is also a very nice touch for me and you can see here they've shown it with those engine those grills left white although on the box cover they're painted red so do some research and see how they should be but um i think that one looks bloody great with its wide wheels and everything and then you've got the road road going version here with the Abarth badge on it, you've got the rubber hold downs on, give it a bit of a racing car touch. And you can see it here they've gone for a red interior. The interior would have been either red or black. So that's that. Again, here they're telling you use Tamiya TS49, which I think is just X7. And then here you've got again pictures of the built-up model and um and a picture of the photo etch, which is a normal little airy thing now. So there we go, that's the instructions. Let's have a look at some plastic. Just before we look at the plastic, we'll have a look at these bits and pieces here. This has all come out of this nice little bag that was very well taped into the box. So to start off with here, on the top we've got our clear parts. And these are actually our uh, instrument dial faces. And if I can catch it in the light, you can see there where they're cut out. What a lovely touch. Beautiful. And then here we've got this sheet here. I'm not quite sure. This is number plates. So I'm not sure why they've done this, but they, it's actually like a... It feels like a piece of soft card, soft plastic card, a self-adhesive. I think it's self-adhesive. I'm sure it's self-adhesive. And their actual number plate. Yeah, that's got to be self-adhesive. No, it's not. It's just, it's just like black. Plastic, but they're like number plates. So I'm guessing they're to represent the, the actual thickness of a because they would have been an aluminium number plate. So strange. And then here we've got our photo etch. This again, this has been done by Photo Mechanico, the same people who did the um, the Delta. But this is brass this time rather than stainless. I wish the the um, the Delta was in stainless in brass. But um, you can see on there we've got all our carpets, and you can see these rubber carpets they would have had. A standard and they're all made in photo etch 
you can see you've got all the embossed pattern in there and then you just put them in and fold them up to the shape you can see you've got the uh, the rears here there's your center console there that's the cover going over your handbrake there and then you've got the rear mats here front mats there this here are for the um, this is texture for the, the sides of the sump obviously save them having to slide mold it and then we've got our brackets here for our rubber hold down straps and then here we've got that cover that goes over the um, over where the number plate would go on the boot lid and then you've got the, that's the hold down strap there for the jack that's going to be a strap for something else I didn't, I didn't see that these are the hold down straps for the fuel tank um, that's the uh, ashtray on the dashboard there that part there the little nubbin sticking out and then some other greeblies and bits and pieces there but you can see it's quite a nice big uh, nice a big old photo sheet there for uh, for your model and then this here I was thinking it wouldn't be leather would it It'd be canvas so it's probably a, a breakdown in translation but this is basically close up you can see it's like a piece of canvas so that is actually your fold back canvas roof so I can see no reason why that wouldn't work and it's fitted there it's not fitted it just comes with a piece of cardboard so um very nice indeed really really nice so let's get on to some plastic I'm afraid you have to put up my opening bags which isn't the end of the world is it really uh, so obviously we've got the body here so lovely little body very glossy plastic uh, we've got some seam lines in it but they are very faint quality wise this is much better than the Lancia I can see straight away um, it does have oil on it it's going to need a wash there was there was an oil spot there um, but we've got some these seam lines here, don't be fooled, they're actually supposed to be there. That seam line there that you can just see in the light here by my finger, that's supposed to be there. But this seam line here, there's one going down there. If we can catch it in the light, there's a seam line there that isn't supposed to be there, so that needs to be sanded out. In fact, that's going to have to be filled because it's got a slight undercut. That one will just sand out. Um, so yeah, lovely. Very nice little body shell. As I say, perfect size really for, uh, you know, it's, it's not much bigger than a 25th scale normal sized car. It's probably about the same size as a Mustang. It's obviously taller, but it's, uh, the actual size of space it takes on the shelf is about the same, I guess. So that's a lovely little body shell. And then here we've got our bag of tyres. These look lovely, to be honest. They're all separate rather than more than our sprue. They don't smell of anything they have got a very very thin mold seam on but they've got beautiful tread pattern on them see the tread pattern there they're very nice indeed and then you've got all the lettering around the outside so we've got what have we got here Cinturato so they're going to be Pirelli's they've got the sizes and everything on them there very very nice indeed and then these here again you've got all the oh, we don't appear to have any tire lettering on these so they haven't bothered with tire lettering these but again you've got the lovely tread pattern for the um these are for the assetto core so obviously you can see how much wider they are than the standard fiat 500 wheels tires but there's no i can't see any Unless it's very, very faint. I don't think there's anything on there. There's no tire lettering at all. How unusual. They got it on there. Maybe the license ran out or something. But um, not to worry. At the end of the day, it gets dark. So get those back in there. Right, so let's start looking at some of the sprues. So we'll start off with this sprue here. This is our main. They do manage to get these bags very tight. This is our main sprue here with our floor pan and everything and seats. Get that back out of the way. So here we've got our actual main floor pan, which is beautifully molded. And we can see in here we've got the all the steel pressing detail on the inside to match the detail pressing on the outside. So that's all lovely. And then on the underside, you've got obviously all the pressing detail. We've also got some handbrake cables and other bits and pieces, some other cables going molded on there. So that's all good. 
Um, all the front end is correctly molded. This is all correct as per the real car. Kind of ejector pin marks there to get rid of, but nothing actually in the floor. There's one there, but nothing in here at all. So no big difficult ejector pin marks to get rid of. Um, having said that, what's that there? That's a yeah, there's an ejector pin mark there, but it's very, very shallow. So, really nice touch, that. Better than the bloody Lancia. It's, it's covered. I know I keep referring to the Lancia. That's my reference point. But this is actually a far nicer kit, I'm thinking. So we've got our interior side panels there. Rear seat. You see you've got the piping around the sides of the seats, which is nice. You could paint that in. That would you'd have like red seats with white piping and whatever. Interior door cards here. That, remember that bit of trim on there, unless it's on the door, that bit of trim there will be... Yeah, they've moulded on that part of the door. That will be body colour, that piece on the top. It's like a, a, a rolled over lip that the panel just slides up under. Uh, and then we've got our normal road car seats here. And then we've got the hinges for the seats to be lifted up on. But it's very, very nice. It's nice plastic as well. Feels good. So that's all cool. We'll get to them so I can pick them up later. Right, and then on to our, we've got our clear parts here. I'm not going to open this up. Um, it hasn't got scratched. I thought it got scratched. It must have been, yes, on the plastic sheeting. So I'm not going to open this up because I don't want to get them scratched. But you can see they're very nice. No distortion. Um, the bag looks a little bit knocked about and damaged. So there may be some polishing to do, but we shall see. Obviously, we've got the, um, the driver's side, which is the left-hand side. You've got this window here. This window here is halfway down. You can see that one there. And then the other side, you've got it rolled up all the way. You've got our rear lights there, rear view, uh, rear mirror, rear rear window, headlight lenses, very nicely done with the with the pattern in them. And then we've got the front side lights. Uh, not sure what that is there. That's the interior light, I'm guessing. And then we've got the front indicators here. So very nicely done, but that's where it's not going to get damaged. Then here we've got our main white body parts. As I say, this is this is one area where I saw Harry talking about the uh, the nightmare that was the building of this kit. So the doors here, very nicely done indeed. I can see a mould line in there where the where the fronts have been, but there's nothing. I can't feel anything. Um, so you've got the external door panels there, you've got the internal door panels here that are going to make up the shell. And then you've got your A post here, which is your door hinges going in. So they're going to get glued into the body. They're going to get glued into there, into here. And then you've got your B post ones here, which are going to get glued into here. Okay, so that's your door shuts. Um, and as I said, I did see one of the bills. They've got some big ejector pin marks in them there. If I can catch them in the light. Camera's struggling with the white against the grey background. But um, yeah, you can see them there. There's three ejector pin marks in each. And then you've got the actual... You've got the actual um, bulkhead there. The engine. That's the engine. That's the front. This is the back. So you've got the, bulk, the uh, ejector pin marks in there which are very deep. For the uh, front panel, that's the front, the uh, front um, cargo area, luggage area, and then you've got the rear rear panel here, which is good in the engine bay. And again, that's got massive ejector pin marks in it. That I'm trying to get you to see in the light, but it's struggling. I'll do some photographs, as I say. Internal bonnet there with four ejector pin marks, so that's 18 less than you've got in the Lancia, and you've got the engine cover here. Which has got one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So again, they've got 18 less in there. Well done. <laughs> um, beautifully done. And you've got all these holes in the back here, all these soft molded holes in the back of the instrument panel, or the dashboard, should I say. Some of those have got to be drawn out and some haven't, so you've got to be careful with that. So uh, that's very, very nice indeed. And then we've got all our door hinges here. We've got some ducting there. That's our scuttle panel. And uh, interior door shells there. So, all very nice. No flash, no mismolds, no short shots. All looks 
pretty good to me. So here we've got another bag of sprues. So we've got here our silver sprue. So obviously this is our transmission there. There's our gearbox, which is beautifully molded. Very, very nice indeed. And then you've got your bag there for your windscreen washers. We've got a wheel. I'm guessing that's a spare wheel there for the road car version. Exhaust silent, sir. Exhaust header pipes. Cold air ducting. More gearbox parts. Engine. Uh, there's your main fan. I think that's the oil filter there. Um, you've got the wiper blades here. Battery clamp. Uh, that's what the rear engine mounting there. There's your little toolbox. Don't paint that. Leave it like this. This is exactly the colour it was in real life. This silver grey plastic. So leave that that colour. That'll look great. Perhaps I'll cover matte varnish. Um, and then we've got some hinges here. These are mounting, uh, suspension mounting points. And a uh, fuel pump. So yeah, very nice. You can see the, the moulding on there is very, very crisp. But as I always say... This silver grey plastic always makes things look soft. As soon as you paint it, bang, it just comes to life. They've got a bloody great big coil there. It looks massive. The size of that compared to the gearbox. It almost looks like that's 24 scale or summer. That's huge. Mind me. And then we've got another big black sprue here, which is nice. So we've got our centre console going in there. This is our roof with the ridge in the middle for the, for the support bar that goes across. Steering wheel, obviously. Um, seat mountings for the standard seats. Tim work for the engine. More tim work for the engine. Rear suspension arms. Uh, that's the um, heater that goes inside. More tim work there for the engine, I think. Uh, some more ducting. Uh, fuel tank. Got a part there coming off the sprue, and another part there coming off the sprue. So I'm going to put them over there so they don't get lost. Uh, we've got pedals. Um, I thought that was pedals. Okay, so we've got left-hand drive pedals and right-hand drive pedals. Um, steering arms. Oh, dear to God, they look really weak. And then you've got that. There you can see here where I'm pointing now. That's, <laughs> that's the gear for the steering. So you can see it's not going to be very strong at all. And then here we've got our worm for the um, on the bottom of the steering column there, which again is all plastic. So we shall see what it's like. Top of the air filter there. There's part of your jack. <laughs> You've got the transverse leaf spring there. Battery. Very, very nice indeed. All beautifully molded. And no visible ejector pin marks, I don't think. Other than the ones inside the roof, if you want to get rid of them. Which on a 12th scar car, I think you should. And then, last but one bag of sprues, you'll be pleased to know. I've got a feeling this bag here, the black is the Assetto Corsa and the silver is the standard car. So two of these, so we're going to look at one of them. So these are the standard wheels. Um, they look to be larger diameter, are they? They look to be like an inch bigger um, and narrower than the other wheels. But here you can see we've got some very, very small parts. So. Here we've got our wheels, obviously, and then we've got the back back of the front uh, brake drums, back of the rear front brake drums, back of the front brake drums, rear one of them. Um, so that's going to be your back plates, and then you've got your actual wheel hubs there. They've got a very weird bolt pattern. They've got massive four bolt bolt pattern rather than having them all close together. They're very close to the outside. It probably makes them very strong, actually. Um, and then we've got some uprights. These are our suspension uprights, bump stops. That's those uh, wishbone links that I showed you in the instructions that clip on and you can see they're crap. <laughs> There's no other word for them, they're horrible. They're just going to break. So they need to be remade or redesigned or something. Uh, shock absorber halves there. Uh, -ba -dum -dum, not sure what that is. And we've got some little bits and pieces of greeblies here. Uh, that's going to be um, a drive shaft for the rear. We've got another steering column there. So we've got three steering columns. So we've got one there, one there, and one there. That is really strange. We've got a steering column there. We've got a steering column there. We've got a steering column there. So you've got three steering columns. 
I guess that's because they're only going to break one <laughs> or all of them so I'm not sure which one you use but uh, there we go so that's all those parts there and then our final black spoon this is our set of coarser parts so we've got the wide flare wheel arches which are nicely done um, you've got the seat subframes here which are solid um, they, I think they probably still were the runners but they haven't got the the um, the sort of radius shape in them they're sort of more solid and then you've got the rear uprights here for the uh, they're holding the, the boot lid up backs of the seats so that's the outer seat shell and then you've got the inner part of the seat here um, and it's nice to see they've made them different rather than having two seats the same you've got a different pattern at the bottom so they won't look so uh, they won't look so funny. Remember, I don't think these had seat belts, so you don't need harnesses or anything. You've got your uh, sports exhaust here. Uh, another part, these are going to be other sports parts there. Your Abart um, uh, sump, and then you've got your Abart rocker cover, which is going to take the bigger, um, on the side there, it's going to take the bigger Weber carburetor. And then you've got the steering wheel there, the Abart steering wheel, which is very nice. You got your a set of coarser wheels, probably a shorter gear stick, all the rubber hold downs there for the uh, for the boot and the bonnet, and oh, that's more part. Of, that's the exhaust down pipes here going into the ends of the silencer. So that's all very nice indeed. So yeah, lovely, um, very nice, crisp moulding on there. So we're going to have lots of bits left over, and here's our chrome sprue. Let's have a look at this. Does this need to be stripped or can it be left as is? And have they done the silly thing of putting... It's all scratched on there by the look of it. Have they done the silly thing of putting sprue connection points right where you're going to see them? So what we have here, I'm just wondering if that is actually scratched there. That'd be a shame because it's really nice chrome. Can't see if that's scratched or if it's actually just grease. Looks like it's probably just oil on there. But um, we've got our window frames here, and it's nice to see the sprue connection points are actually on the inside of the frames. So they're not going to show. Um, there's our rear lights, and they've put the sprue connections. On the ends of there, I suppose there was nowhere else they could put them, in fairness. They could have run it onto the back, like Tacom does. But um, that's just going to need a touch-up. You've got your emblem here going on the front. And it's nice to see they've put the sprue connection points on the bottom. Unlike they did on the Lancia grill. But run, run right on the bloody top. Um, you've got your mirrors there. They've put the sprue connection point on the inside. Yeah, the inside edge. So that's a nice... No, it's not. It's right on the top. Well done. They could have put it on the bottom. So, um, yeah, you're going to have... And again, here, you've got nice chrome chrome mirrors there, but they've put the sprue connection point on the top. They could have put it on the bottom, couldn't they? Um, but, yeah, it's very nice chrome. Headlamp bowls there, which are lovely. Um, door handles and window winders and stuff. It, but, it's, it, as you can see, it's really lovely chrome. It's very realistic looking but unfortunately I'm looking at that I think it is actually all scratched well we've got flash on the ends it's gonna have to be stripped and redone but um not to worry I don't need the front one anyway but uh you can see there's the um that's the cover for the uh, number plate light there again I wish they'd get into this technology of putting the sprue connector onto the face like Tacom does so much and then and then you wouldn't have you'd just sand it off of there and you'd have still have full chrome running down the side but hey ho it is what it is so that's that there in fact I'm going to put that back in the bag so it doesn't get scratched anymore but that's going to have to I think that's going to have to go in some oven cleaner I'll just go that way oven cleaner I'll probably leave these as is um probably leave what I can as is actually but uh yeah Lovely. Um, we've looked at the decal sheet and we've got this bit of nylon mesh to go in, which we've got. It's done like this big. You're only using a piece out of there. It's, done, it's obviously a standard Italeri size sheet of mesh. So there we go, guys. That is it. That is the, um, the Fiat, I can almost call it a 500, but it is a 500, but it's a 695 SSA, a set of Corsa. So um, 
and it's kit number what was it it was seven do, 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 four seven oh five four seven oh five so there we go lovely little model and i will be building this so keep your unless that lancaster turns up so keep your eyes peeled i will be building this obviously i'm going to wait till simon's better uh, and then um, and then we'll go from there but so i will be building this i will be modifying suspension parts and turning it into a model that you can actually pick up put down and push down on a suspension without it all just falling apart so uh, watch this space it'll be an enjoyable little build and if you want to go and get one you can build it along with me so um i'll see you all soon thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed it i've enjoyed it and uh, glad i got it and as i say i found this on amazon for 92 quid which i thought looking around was a really good price um we didn't look at these bits here there you go we've looked at them now again i say as i said with the lancia with this stuff in like this get the bag open okay get your staple out get your staple out carefully okay because if you're going to put this in your stash and it stays there for six months or a year or whatever we all know what happens to masking tape don't we and this ain't kabuki tape like your tamiya tape this is masking tape and we know what happens to it it goes all white and crystally and it leaves horrible marks on everything so get it off okay this is already starting to go i can feel it so get it off you don't want it on there throw it away and we can see on there already this is what i'm talking about you can see on there see the white deposits left behind and what happens is as time goes on the tape dries out and those white deposits become non impossible to remove so just get it off and put it back in the bag loose you've got some little tiny springs in there we don't want to lose them i'm going to get this tape off of here because i really don't want it on there it's horrible 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 stuff there you go okay and just put it back in the bag loose like so and then we can roll the bag back up get that tubing down out of the way and then we can once again we can put a staple in there just like that okay and it's all held in there and you haven't got that bloody horrible tape in there that is my first advice with any of these obviously they do on all of them but the Lancia and with this one ordinary masking tape we know what happens it goes hard it turns into that white crystalline stuff it's impossible to get off in the in the delta kit the ha the um handbrake the harnesses is the word i was looking for are wrapped up in it and they'll end up with all that white powder in that sort of harness material so get it off so there we go guys as i say thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it and um hit that like subscribe and um and uh, come back and watch some more we've got lots and lots going on i've got the at the moment we've got the Lancia Delta being modified and trying to make all that stronger. I'm working on wheel bearings at the moment, that kind of thing. Um, and at the moment, of course, we've got the Premier Build Series going on with the Dasvirk 116th Stug. And that's a lovely build that's come together really nice. So thanks for watching again, and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.